No, even before that, what actually, what do you think is the major cause of teenage pregnancy? Major cause would have to be, um... Are you sure? Oh, yes. What's up, Azzy? This is Adina Fembi, and keep watching Goshes Online. Last week, Ellie opened my adventure bus, and then she won herself a trip to this hotel, Rojem Hotel, actually. And guess what? I have bumped into Adina, a sensational vocalist. And I want to have a conversation with her. I mean, an odd conversation, actually. So I also have this water for her. Hello. How are you? I'm good. What's up? Thank you. It's really hot. I could use some water. Actually, can you have let, let me open it for you. So this is your sensational vocalist, Adina, right? Yes. And I bumped into her here at the Rogem Hotel. Anyway, I'm going to ask her questions about this hotel, but for now, like I said, I'm going to add, uh, ask odd questions odd. <laughs> actually what i want to find out eh, with respect to teenage pregnancy mm. and music mm -hmm. what what do you think do you causes mean, do you mean the the correlation as in the connection between teenage pregnancy and music yeah what causes no even before that what actually what do you think is the major cause of teenage pregnancy major cause would have to be um, poor supervision from parents because I believe that well they say charity believes begins at home mm -hmm. and I believe that um, the way your child turns out is highly dependent on how the parents look after the child then of course there's also stubborn kids who do <laughs> whatever they want no matter what the parents do but yeah if you ask me what the major cause is I would say poor parenting skills or poor parenting poor parenting yes well people people actually have same opinion mm. but there are others too who think music mm -hmm. actually secular music is yeah. a major cause of teenage pregnancy if you say that then you're in, i think people that say that are in the same category as people who say women who wear dresses that reveal their skin is the main cause of rape i don't i don't believe <laughs> I, think, I don't believe that yeah but that that one even has its space but if you take talk of um the music in connection with teenage pregnancy because it, it's almost like people are we are made up of words right what mm -hmm. we are constantly hearing mm -hmm. is what is um shaping our lives mm -hmm. and now we're looking at the kind of music that is coming out nowadays the kind of mm -hmm. lyrics content that they are producing mm -hmm. and the kids picking up picking up again it goes back to parenting because i remember when i was growing up my mom was very strict on us. Mm. She made sure we were very religious. We went to church and she instilled discipline and values in us. So yes, I went to church, but I also had certain filthy songs from America and things that had explicit content. But it didn't, it didn't tell me, Adina, to go and do those things. I heard it and I was like, okay, there are songs like this. Cool. And I kept it moving. No matter how many times I would hear it, it wouldn't influence me to go and do it. It will only influence you when your willpower is weak or when you are surrounded by people who will tell you that this is okay to do. No matter who you are, you come from a home. You come from a, a nurturing um, background. So your parents teach you the first things. Mm. That's why they say racism is taught. People grow up and come into this world not knowing anything. Most of the things that people pick up, mm. they pick it up from their, their home, their beginning stages their parents, what their parents would teach them, all those things. So I don't think it's the music because there are so many negative things in the world. Secular music is there. I wouldn't even call secular music a negative thing, you know. It's just music. It's part of life. What, whatever it is they discuss is not about anything in Mars or mm. on the moon. It's about things that happen on Earth. Sure. And I always say that I like to make music for different occasions. So when there's a wedding, and there's a couple that's about to be married. You can listen to my songs. It talks about being in love and what it is. Are you saying that because I'm making music for people that are supposed to be 
Well, everybody knows what their target is. I say because of that, I'm encouraging the children. No, I'm not even talking about you per se. No, no, I'm no, just. I, I yeah. mean, I don't okay, do gospel, okay, so okay. automatically I fall in that same bracket. So all I'm saying is things are in the world. There are so many negative things all around. The children will pick up what they pick up mm. by strongly dependent on how they are brought up. So it's the home. It's, it's, the not, home. it's not the external factors. It's the mother that brought the child to the world, or the father that brought the child into the world, and how they ushered them into the world. Because they know what the world is like. And they bring a new child up. So it's up to you to now say, okay, this is where I want you to go. Or this is how I want you to grow. Mm. You know, it's not the things that are there. The things that they'll always be there. <laughs> Guys, so basically, that is it. I don't know, but um, I read a test sometime back concerning mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. How powerful and spiritual music is. Yes. Because uh, way back, I think a test was, an experiment was conducted. Yeah. Um, somewhere in Toronto, Canada, about um, an operation that was supposed to be a surgery. Mm -hmm. and one of the most painful surgery in this world. Um, okay. um, what's the name? The surgery of the uh, female, something like that. Okay. I've never heard of it. Okay, and what happens is that anytime they attempted to do that, almost the patient died. Okay. So now they sat down and they say, how they're going to handle the case is to. Um, introduce 15 minutes of barack classic cow music to the patient hmm. and after that they'll require half of the anesthesia okay they'll because give it the to the patient yes therapy. it's therapy i believe you music is very powerful and i think you're saying this as a backup to what we we're talking about sure earlier. sure i do not dispute the fact that music is powerful mm. is a strong tool and actually most that's why advertising companies would like to put some kind of cheesy you know sure. jingle to back the thing because it actually works mm. however i'm saying that as a as the a parent, bottom line has to do with poor parenting. parenting if you're a parent you know all these things that are in the world you now mold your child and say this is how i want you to be brought up so you can say you can't listen to this kind of music or tell them plain plain that don't sing this kind of song in my house <laughs> because you think it might do xyz it's strongly based on what the parent thinks for their child Sure. But for me, growing up, my mom instilled discipline and values in me that no matter what I had, it didn't tell me to go, to go and do the thing. It just opened my mind to say, okay, in this world, mm. there's this kind of music and there's this kind of music. And because I love music, I naturally gravitated towards a certain distinct sound or style. So music has impacted my life, but it never moved me to say, oh, let me, let go, me and go, go and this. do this or let me go and do that. Rather... It was on a different level. And you know, music hits people differently. We all relate to it differently. But mm. I think that if you have... <laughs> that was a fish. <laughs> but yeah, if you have the right direction, if you have the right stewardship from mm. your parents, you shouldn't go astray. It's not that. Music is not, it's not like a hard drug. Okay. <laughs> so uh, 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 that's it. Um, I think I'm going to leave this one for another time. Yes. Maybe when I come across somebody else, I can also ask, ask the same question and get their opinion. Now you've been in the city for like two days, right? Yes. I say two weeks. Every day is a week. Every day is a week for you? Yes. Takwade is that hectic for me. Takwade is hectic. That's exactly hectic what... Hectic as in packed. There's so many things happening and it's so interesting to me. So it's like even a day is, 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 is like a week in a crowd. <laughs> really? Yeah. But what, what is your general overview? What do you think about Takrade as a city? I think it's a beautiful city. I love the people. They're fun-loving people. They're nice people. I think they will fall in the typical Ghanaian bracket when they say Ghanaians are very hospitable and nice. And when you come to Takrade, you really feel that. Mm. And I love the fact that um, you will have a sense of the culture. So it's a blend of fanties and people from the western. And you have a sense, a bit of, you know, each bit, a bit of each side. Mm. So it's beautiful. It's a nice, and I love the beaches. I love the food. I love the, the, the food. Which, which, which particular food have you yeah, tasted like here in the city? I like the food. But one thing that I'll say is probably unique to Takari will be the octopus. Octopus. Right? It's unique to Takari, no? It's unique to the coast. And Takari is a coastal town. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love the octopus or seafood generally. But I love uh, the fufu. Fufu. And the dokon and <laughs> People have um, this impression about this city that Takrade is a dead city. Like, wow. there's no sort of activities, business, it's not business friendly. Business friendly? 
I, I do my my business is music business. Mm. And <laughs> so far it's been very, very friendly to me. But most of the times I've come out here, it's been for work. I'm actually looking forward to time a time that I'll come just to relax and have a good time because I love the city. I don't think it's dead. Um but yeah, it's very friendly to my business. But you've been here for just two days. Yeah, but this is not the first time I've been in Takwadi. Really? Yeah. I actually have lived in Takwadi for like a vacation period, a long vacation period when I was young. My aunt and uncle lived around the naval base area. Mm. So I lived there. And in my adult ages, I've been here for a show. Like I said, it's been friendly to my mind. I've done a show here. I've come here to promote stuff. Um, yeah, we passed through to Takwa, but we still stopped to have a good time to experience Christmas. Mm. Christmas. Christmas, if you talk of yeah. Christmas, that's Takwa. That for that one, everybody yeah, would yeah. just back in the living room. That was really nice. That was really nice. But I want to ask you an honest question. Mm -hmm. Would you relocate? Would you relocate? Would you like to relocate? Would they ask you to relocate? I mean, forget about Accra and come and stay in Takwadi and do your regular music business. Will you do that? I can come and move out here for a while. But I think I'm very used to Accra. But I have no problem with Takwadi. If I get a nice spot for me that works for what I do, mm. I think Takwadi is somewhere that I can be. Because the maybe the only thing will be infrastructure compared to Accra. But the people, in terms of the relations, the everything else that I need, everybody in Takrad is Takrad is not a village. Takrad is a city. So it's also like Accra. But like I said, the only difference would be the infrastructure. Mm. So yeah, I could for a bit. Yeah. Are you sure? Oh yes. I love because so here. many people, so many people actually, people who have talent. Right. They don't want to come and live out here. They, they don't want to. And even those who are down here are actually moving from here to Accra simply because things things are not really working down here. Well, you, you, you don't get to see that first impression when you get here. Of course, I wouldn't because I don't live here. But if I lived in Takwadi mm. and I was a musician, my focal point would be to make sure that in every corner of the Western region and Central, mm. I'm known. When I finish, I will be, of course, I'll be moving to Accra to do interviews and stuff like that. And for that reason, I'll probably get a temporary space out there, but I'll always come back home. Can, can you give an advice on how they can make themselves known to, um, like you said, you make sure that um, Central Region and all those people will get to know you. Can you give an advice how you do that? Um, if, if I wanted my music to be, to, be, um, to be very popular, if I wanted to be an established artist, I will work hard at my craft, make sure I get the right songs, um, that makes it easy to promote. Because if a song is nice and somebody doesn't even like it, they can't help but play it. So yeah, I'll make sure my material is good. And then when the song is finally out, I'll make sure that I do extensive promotion to every corner, every radio station, every TV station, um, every pub, because those guys play songs a lot. Sure. You know, so I'll use all the marketing to, to achieve what it is that I need. But I will really work hard and go into every corner. I won't just say, oh, my song is good, so I'm just chilling in the house. People will hear it, man. So guys, basically, Takrada is not a dead city. No. But you can just um, become whoever you want to become. Of it's just hard work. Hard, hard work, hard work. I mean, we have artists like Kofi Kunata, who sure. is based in Takrada. But he's known heavily in Accra because his songs are amazing. And he's got that impact on people. And he's winning amazing awards. Not for just Western region, mm. but for the whole of Ghana. So if somebody like Kenata can do it, someone like Castro can do it. I mean, there's so many big names from here. There's a Simons, um, um, well, who, is Papi Yangtze from Takari? Papi. Papa Yangtze. Papa, Papa Yangtze, yeah, sure, sure. Papi Kojo is even from Takari. Mm. So many people, so many big names. But, but that they, alone is proof that it's possible. They think uh, some of these people, somebody actually handpicked them and How? then positioned them at where they are now. If that somebody is God, I will believe you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, basically, guys, that is it. And you've been in this hotel for for since I arrived. Since you arrived, yes. I have checked in. I review hotels and okay, resorts. Okay, cool. And I have checked into some hotels that are very bad, especially bathrooms. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree with you. What do you think about this place? I've not been there before. Okay. Like, I don't know where you were given. At my place. I've given one of the biggest rooms. Mm. 
but I enjoyed my space out here. I mean, coming here, finding the route, because it's a little far from, you know, the action in town. Mm. I was a little worried. I was like, hmm, where are we going to go? But once we, we got here, this is the first thing you see, the pool. It's sure. so relaxing and soothing. And then you enter the room and it's beautiful. So I will, I think I'll call this place my hideout. The hideout. A hideout is usually somewhere that is not in, in the heart of town. Most people don't know about it, but you enjoy every facility mm. in there. I love the rooms, I love the bathrooms, I love that the hot water works, <laughs> the soap, everything, the covers, the AC is chilling, entertainment, there's, there's TV, there's fridges, there's everything, and there's a balcony. So if you want to just relax, kick back and relax, you can just go out there, get some fresh air. I really enjoyed myself here, and I'm definitely coming back. Then she also said that she has made this place her hangout. Don't yes. even think of finding out when she's going to be here next, and then See, that's just going to spy on, on but her. But next time I come out here, I'm definitely coming to her, because I actually enjoyed myself. And sometimes hotels feel very stiff, and yeah, it's a room, mm -hmm. bed, you know? But this is like a home. It's like you're in your house-ish, you know? So that was really nice. So guys, this is my time with Adina here at the Rogem Hotel. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Follow her on all her social media handles. Can you give it to them? It's Adina underscore Tembi on Twitter and Facebook. And Adina Tembi on Facebook. Twitter and Instagram. And Adina Tembi on Facebook. That's it. Follow Goshers online on Facebook, YouTube, and IG. And, and bye, 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 bye. What's up, Azzy? This is Adina Fembi, and keep watching Goshes Online.